Good morning, last night we slept at a place called Come to Good Farm, what a name. And it definitely is a farm. There we are surrounded by chickens and sheep. What happened? We went to go and have our shower like we do every morning together. But today, it's not happening. We didn't want to shower today, did we? Mm. No. We're okay now, aren't we? Safe to say we've had our fair share of wet and not so wonderful weather during this trip. But we're British, so we carry on no matter the weather. We're now into our third week exploring the coast of Cornwall. And by now, we've visited picturesque harbour towns, seen surface paradise beaches, and got to grips with our van, we think. Join us this week as we head to our final few destinations on this last leg of our Cornish road trip. Time to turn the van around. I think one of my favorite things about this van is this bathroom. It literally turns into an airing cupboard overnight. You've got this one bent down here that just pumps hot air into it and it just dries all our towels, anything that Mila's soaked it during the day. And yeah, you wake up and everything is bone dry. This, however, is a bit annoying. I mean, you get in a rhythm of it. It's much like anything. Once you've been in the van for a few days and you kind of know where everything is and you're used to being in each of the space, you find your rhythm. But this table, instead of sliding out and popping up like it does in the California, this one we have to literally clunk on and off and lay on the bed. Like, it's not a big inconvenience, but it's just a bit annoying. One side to van life to bear in mind is the fact there are always tasks that need to be done in order to get on your way each day. And yes, these need to be done no matter the weather. It is absolutely throwing it down. Guess what? what? You're gonna have to get out and get the blocks anyway. Oh. <laughs> Why is there always one more job? Come on then. It's slippery. Oh my word. I'd hate to be a sheep. Shall we go? Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. After passing through Falmouth on yet another rainy day, we spent the night in Fioc. Today's plan was to make our way across the River Fal, and to do that, we'd have to take a boat. So we're getting a ferry from King Harry Floating Bridge. We've literally just missed the boat, but we can actually see across to where the boat ends and it's not far at all and i can see from here it is seven pounds single or ten pounds return for a car for a van which i'm guessing is what we have it's the same it's the same <laughs> you can take an alternative route to avoid the ferry crossing but we love the novelty of crossing the water especially with mila when long daily drives don't offer much excitement especially in the rain Cheers, thank you very much. What can we see? See the water? And we're here. That literally took like five minutes. Easy peasy. Now we're on the other side of the river. It's moving now. It's moving, babe. It just meant getting on that ferry this morning cut out a huge section of the journey. You can do the journey that we're doing by road, but it will take you about an hour, whereas that crossing obviously took us like five minutes. And it means that we are now going to St. Moors on our way up to our final destination. Can you believe it? It's nearly over. So we're gonna go to St. Moors, see a few beaches, depending on the rain, um, and make our way up towards Ferry. From the ferry to St. Moors, it's a short but picturesque 15 minute drive. Just parked up in St Moore's Harbour car park and it is absolutely still throwing it down. So we've just seen a nice bakery as we've driven through. We're going to go there, grab some food, grab a little coffee, try and sit out the rain I guess because this is the worst day it's been so far on this trip. It is just on another level today. As all British do in the rain, take shelter and opt for coffee and cake. The rain did begin to ease so we managed a short walk around the harbour. St Moors sits at the end of the Roseland Peninsula on the southern coast of Mid Cornwall. It's home to many exclusive waterside villages. Despite the weather, the harbour town itself is beautiful and well worth adding to your list.
onwards and upwards heading through the trees of Turo to visit the next stop on my never-ending list. The visibility today is so poor and it's such a shame because we've come over to this part of Cornwall that I'm so excited to see and the weather's just not on our side today but hey it is what it is. Mila's sleeping, she's napping and no screaming or crying today so you've got to take the winds where you can and we're just going to crack on so we are heading next to she says can't even remember the name of the places there's that many names going on in my head of places that I want to see and not to miss but the place that we're going to now is a tiny little cove called Kibberick Cove and it looks beautiful on Google in the sun with blue skies and today is somewhat foggy I'm truly gutted that we've had a few days of bad weather but at least the drone could show us what we would have seen We've just arrived and wow, honestly, this place is insane. <laughs> we can't see anything. I can count five sheep, that's about it. So yeah, we never knew, did we? Anyway, back in the car. I feel like today has been a bit of a write off just because of the weather. Not even just the weather, the bad weather, but it's just the visibility, I guess, that comes with the bad weather. Change of plan. We're just going to drive straight up to St. Austell. There was a few beaches that I would have loved to have seen today that's along the coast all the way up there, but it's just, yeah, like Riv said, the visibility is just zilch today. So it's what it is. We'll drive up to St. Austell. We need to get some food for tonight, find our campsite, which is just around the corner from there, and pitch up and hope for a better day tomorrow. The frustration had got to all of us. Hi, that's it. Let's go. Ready to start our last full day in Cornwall. And today we're heading to two places that I really want to see and that I used to go to as a child but I can't remember. Fairy, although I know that's not how you say it. Fowey? I can't remember how the man told me it yesterday. Fairy, although I know that's not how you say it. Fowey? I can't remember how the man told me it yesterday. Foy. It's pronounced Foy. And Polpero. So we're going to head along the coast to see them. Hopefully it stays dry. It's cloudy right now. And yeah, we'll have a little look at the cute little harbour towns. Sad to be leaving the penultimate pitch up of our trip, but still so much beauty to see. From our park up in St. Austell across to Foy was a scenic 25 minute drive. There's a dedicated parking just outside the village and a short walk brings you down to the town. There is also a pram friendly step free route. This place is so beautiful. It just like, instantly feels calm. We were saying as we've been driving along along the coast and visiting some towns that some of them actually felt a little bit run down, just needed a bit of care and loving given to them. But this place is different. Beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. Just looking at the houses, like so many different colours and all the boats out on the harbour, like it just feels beautiful, quaint town. And peaceful. Obviously the first place we came across was a bakery. <laughs> a very beautiful bakery with the biggest cookies for Mila and some much needed coffee for the adults. Walking around the village we can see why it's a firm favourite for visitors and locals alike. We stayed a while by the water and grabbed some lunch before making our next rookie mistake. No wonder tourists are spotted a mile away when you're in town. That was so close. <laughs> oh my word. We've got to get the ferry. So that sat nav has literally took us all the way back down into the village. And as we were walking through, we were saying like, oh, these roads are so narrow. And we've actually just followed the sat nav all the way down. <laughs> and it's just, it's been a squeeze, it's been tight. Not gonna lie, it's been very tight. <laughs> we've had to pull the wind mirrors in. It's tight. <laughs> Wow. It's 
literally like a glass box here at the side of the house overlooking the harbour and they've got their MacBook Pro. Man, that is the kind of office we need. Moving on, we didn't get much further along before we were caught in a tight spot once again. Oh my word, the narrowness has not stopped. We're now on a single track lane going to Polpero. And you can hear the beeping on because we're just so close. Ah, these tight squeezes are giving me palpitations. No exaggeration, these roads are narrow. In the height of summer, they must get gridlocked often. Luckily, the locals were super friendly and accommodating to our chunky house on wheels. Our final and last stop. Paul Perro. We actually turned up probably about an hour ago. Came to the car park and you have to pay minimum is three hours. Six pounds for three hours. Oof. Absolute extortionate rip off. But anyway, <laughs> we decided to go check in at the campsite because we didn't want that to close. And then we've decided to come back, pay for the three hours, have a look around and probably get some dinner here as we've got the three hours to explore. I mean, you could probably, by the looks of it, walk around it in three minutes, but you know, <laughs> three hours. Let's see what we can get up to. To be fair, it's worth the six pound parking. It is beautiful. It's pretty quiet. I guess it's out of season and it's kind of late for us Brits, but it's equally as pretty. The streets around here are banned to cars, so it's perfect place to explore by foot. Yet another beautiful harbour town brimming with shops, selling paintings, potteries, jewellery and souvenirs, attracting visitors in their thousands, especially during the summer months. Pizza? Pizza it is. Most of the places here only open until 6 and it's now, what time is it? I'm not sure. I think it's... But I think we've been here for 2 hours and 59 minutes. 5 minutes honest. to 6. So we found one place, pizza and beer, that's open till half 9. So I think this is the place. As it's out of season, many places close early, so we were thankful for delicious pizza. Can't go wrong with a freshly cooked margarita, especially in Mila's eyes. That was yum! Was that yummy? Yummy pizza! Yummy! Excuse me! Back to the van for the last time. <gasps> Bellies full, hearts full. We had ended the day and this trip on a high. That's it, no more sleeping in the van. No, no more sleeping in the van. Sad, but you know, we had a great trip. And this time round, I actually really want to do it again unlike when we left Scotland's trip and we both wanted to get a divorce. It's not been that bad this time, has it, babe? We've actually got on really well and our only stress this time has been the little bean. Had a good time? Good time being outside. That's it, guys. That is our Cornwall series over. I know, sad. I'm actually really sad to say bye to the van. Like, it'll be a, sh it'll be a shame when we don't wake up here and that it won't be all kind of life for the next few weeks but anyway we've had the best time and Cornwall has been a dream even though we've not had the best weather it we've seen beautiful typical beaches. today we're leaving I know. and I'm in a t-shirt the sun is beating down yeah. and it's so warm that is England for you it's typical it's always the day you leave the sun comes out we're not sure when our next van life will be we have a few more plans cross seas for the rest of the summer but we're definitely open to doing it again and trying somewhere new. We have a few places that we'd love to do it, so keep your eyes peeled and see what van we get next time. And just want to say a quick special thanks to VW UK for loaning us this Grand California for this trip. It has been perfect, pretty much. We are actually going to be doing a full review on this vehicle, so that will be released next week after this one. But if you have made it this far, guys, we appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a like give it a thumbs up really does help us out on the old algorithm drop us a comment below we'd love to connect with you and please subscribe that also helps us a lot and we will see you next week